Hello, Facebook land. Welcome, 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 welcome. I am excited to be here with you today. We are going to watercolor. It is going to be a long Facebook Live. I'm just going to warn you. Probably long. So, um, before we start, I want to just tell you a few things. First, if you are interested in purchasing any of the products that you see today, you can shop in my online store at shoploveandstampin.com. If you want a specific product, they are all listed in my um, description of the video. And before we go any further, I just realized I need to share this to my other Facebook group. One moment, please. Talk amongst yourselves. I'm almost done. Okay. So, I have some giveaways today. I have some fun stuff to show you. Do me a favor, give me lots of thumbs up and hearts and share this um, Facebook Live in groups and let them know I'm live. Hello in Australia. I'm so happy that my time change of Facebook Lives has given us more of our friends from Australia visiting. I think that's awesome. So, I started the day super happy because, well, I'm still happy, but I started it really happy because the sun was out and it was shining and it was beautiful and wonderful and glorious. And now look at it. Look at that. Come on. What happened? I am not pleased. Oh Lord, what did I do? There we go. I am not pleased with the gloom. I'm over it. I am ready for sunshine. I had a full day of sunshine yesterday and I was glorious and my mood was glorious and I was so happy. And then today we're back to gloom and doom. What are you going to do though, right? So let's, let's show off some of the awesome mail that I have received over the last week. Do, do, do. Okay, so I got this note from Tracy in Australia and I love it. She heat embossed the sentiment and she used this awesome cake stamp set from the Amazing Life framelit set and stamp set. And I always am excited when I see this like airmail and I know it's from another place. Okay, this one is beautiful. It was stamped with the gorgeous Painted Seasons stamp set. And this is from Jan Sumrak. Isn't this beautiful? That's a birthday card. My birthday was last week, but I'm still receiving a few cards here and there. And then this is from my friend Kathy. Kathy sent me this really adorable birthday card. Love it. So those were my random acts of kindness cards from last week. Love those. Today we have a couple giveaways. We've got um, this little sampler of all my love designer series paper and the black foil paper with these clear faceted gems and this is the heart epoxy droplets that will go with this one so these are both giveaways for today's Facebook live and I'll be choosing the winners at the end of the live and so I'll set those aside for now but I just wanted to show them to you and then we are going to watercolor so I'm going to be showing you tips and tricks and ideas for watercoloring oh, with ink refills. So let's talk about that really quick for just a second. This is the Brights collection of ink refills. 
These are meant for a couple of things. One of the things these are meant to be used for is to refill your Stampin' ink pads. So when an ink pad runs out or runs low, you simply take the lid off, you drop it into the ink pad, it absorbs it, and your ink pad is re-inked. This prevents you from having to replace ink pads. You just simply refill them. Um, I use this little container here that I got at a uh, craft store years and years and years ago. As you can tell, it's very well loved. I use this to put my re-inkers in. And... Doo -doo -doo. Hold, hold, hold. We are also going to be using the well-written framelits from Stampin' Up. These are in the Occasions catalog. So I've already actually pre-cut my sentiments that are going to go on here. But um, the, this is the the die cuts that we're using. I've got a paper towel because that's a requirement whenever you're doing anything with painting. You always need a paper towel. You need clean, clear water. And honestly, I usually have, let me zoom out a little. I usually have two of these, one water well for clean water and one water well for dirty water. In fact, I might go get that. I have pre-stamped my image. So I'm going to zoom in. And here are some tips for watercoloring. Oh, here, my other stuff. Okay, so this is the Lovely Lattice stamp set, and this is a free stamp set with a $50 order. So if you want this, you can place a $50 order and choose it for free. Hello in Ohio and Pits Pennsylvania. And then I've got three brushes here, and I don't know that I'll use them all, but these are my main brushes. So these are both size six silver black velvet brushes. And this is a size two silver black velvet brush. These are my favorite brushes. They're thirsty brushes. So they absorb water into the bristles really, really well. And then um, I can use my paper towel to get some of the water out. And I'll give you some tips as I'm going along today. But these are my favorite brushes for watercoloring. And I, before we go any further, I want you guys to do me a favor. I want you to entertain yourselves for like two seconds because I do need to go get another well of water. And um, while I'm doing that, I would love it if you would comment in and share with me your favorite Stampin' Up! color. You can comment and tell me your favorite Stampin' Up! color and also comment and tell me where you're from. And I will be right back. Give me two seconds. I need more water. Okay, I also grab my coffee off the coffee machine. Everybody should have a cup of coffee while they're watercoloring, am I right? Okay, so yes, you made it. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh my goodness, it's really pouring now outside. That's always fun. Oh, this weather, you guys, I'm just so tired of it. Tired, tired, tired. Ooh, flirt, flirty flamingo. I love that color. Ah, Sherry. I like that. Fresh fig. Oh, fresh figs going away, Robin. Can you guys hear the rain? Can you hear that? It's literally like all of a sudden the sky is opened and it's dumping rain. Okay. So I'm going to add my colors and I'm going to zoom in a little. So that you can see me better coloring and we're gonna choose our colors so I want to use I already know what I want to use we're gonna use melon mambo and we're gonna use mango melody and 
some Daffodil Delight. And I'm doing two drops of each, which is plenty. And then we're gonna do Coastal Cabana, or uh, Coastal Cabana, Gorgeous Grape. We are using Coastal Cabana. Coastal Cabana. I know you're thinking like, oh my Lord, that's not very much ink, but you're gonna be amazed. And then Granny Apple Green. Now I just have to remember where everything is because they can kind of look alike. All right, so settle in, grab a cup of coffee. We're gonna have some story time. Um, and we are going to paint and I'm gonna give you tips as I go. All right. Yes, re-inkers are awesome for so many techniques. So we're going to start out. I'm gonna use my number two size brush and I'm gonna get it wet, get some water going. And I'm gonna just start choosing kind of what colors I wanna use where. So to dilute your re-inker, because when you, stick, when you stick this brush in here, you're getting full pigment. So I'm gonna show you here. You see how dark that is. So in order to dilute that a little bit, you can pull some of the reinker up to the edge like this and just use a little bit on the edge, okay? And I want kind of just a very light covering all over this flower of this pigment, of this color, which is the gorgeous grape. And I see a water droplet getting ready to fall off my brush. I don't want that to happen. And then you just have to be patient and you have to go back in and grab more color. And you can just let it move around a little bit. Now I have control issues, so I struggle a little bit with watercolor because um, watercolor is supposed to be really free moving and just kind of different shades and beautiful. And that is really hard for me, but I try. That's the best I can do. <laughs> it's the best all of us can do, right? So a tip for watercoloring is moving. Um, you definitely want to move. So I wouldn't want to now go in and color this green leaf because this area is wet. So if I were to accidentally touch the two together, what would happen is I would end up with, um, with them mixing and purple and green make brown. And so then I would have a brown flower and I don't want a brown flower, I want a purple flower. So I'm just kind of adding a base layer of pigment down to begin with here. And on all the, on all of the, so on this one, I'm actually gonna go in with my number six brush and I'm just gonna add water all over this first. And then I'm gonna show you the bloom effect because it's gorgeous. Okay, so we're just, oh, I'm telling you guys, can you hear the rain? It's kind of perfect actually. I'm like sitting here with my coffee and I'm watercoloring with my friends and I'm listening to the rain. And even though I'm over the rain and I'm ready for nothing but sunny skies, look at that. Isn't that cool? Did you see how that bloomed out? And I'm just going to help it along a little. And now I'm not picking up any more pigment. I'm actually dabbing it off and adding a little water to my brush. And as I move out to the edges, I'll get lighter and lighter because I'm not adding pig more pigment to this. And if I wanna soak up a little bit of water, I can dry my brush. That's what I love about these brushes is I can dry this brush and I can go in and it will pull up some of that excess water. So I was prompted to do this water coloring because I've received quite a few messages saying, why don't you ever do any of the fun stuff that you used to do? Yes, I am using watercolor paper. I did not say that, I'm sorry. So watercolor paper 
This is Arches Hot Press Watercolor pa Paper. It is not Stampin' Up! Watercolor Paper. I have found that Arches Water... Water... Good Lord, I can't talk. Arches Hot Press Watercolor Paper will take more layers of water. It's a higher grade watercolor paper, but you could certainly stamp and watercolor with any watercolor paper. Okay, so stays on, that's correct. I use stays on ink to stamp this and I stamped this over and over until I got a really good, clear, crisp image. Uh, I'm just reading back through your guys' comments because I missed them. Okay, I think I got everybody's. All right, so um, now we're going to, I'm gonna switch colors. So I'm gonna clean my brush and I am going to go ahead and lay down my base and I'm really gonna dilute this color with some water. So the more water you add, the more diluted your color. So this is my base for my big flower here. And Deborah asked, how long does it take to dry? It honestly, Deborah, depends on how much water, how saturated it is, how much water you've used. The more water you use, the more saturated it's, or the more, wet it's going to be and with this watercolor paper the the watercolor tends to give you a little bit more time it it doesn't soak into the paper quite as fast which is a good thing because that means that you have the opportunity to you have the opportunity to move the colors around a little bit. So as you can see, without doing any shading or anything, this is already really pretty. So you really wouldn't have to do much. So I'm picking up a little more clean, clear water and I'm gonna go in and put my base layer down for this flower. The shading is really where it becomes magic in my opinion. And then I'm just gonna start adding a little bit of color to all of these random little rosebuds while these other flowers dry a little. And I want most of the rosebuds to be yellow, but I'm going to add a few that will be Melon Mambo. Okay, so we'll clean our brush. Oh, I'm so glad that you're, where did you get your dishes? Oh, these are from Pampered Chef. These are Pampered Chef little cups. I love them. They're wonderful. Okay. So then we're going to, let's see, let's turn this so I can get to my Melon Mambo. And I really want light pigment on this, so I'm going to. You can already tell it's too much. So I just dip it in the water. When you see me going off screen like that, I'm just dipping it in the water and then onto the paper towel. And it just continually lightens the pigment of my ink. So this takes some time to play with. You have to definitely get a feel for it. Um, there's a little bit of a learning curve. But honestly, it's so easy. And who cares if it's, it doesn't have to be perfect, okay? This is the problem. People worry about perfection. I am not a watercolorist. I am a card maker who likes pretending like she can watercolor. And I'm just laying colors down. That's all I'm doing. And the wonderful thing about Stampin' Up! is it takes all the guesswork out of color combining because I know that as long as I use the Brights collection of, of inks, they're all gonna go well together. I could put any of these, I could put any of these inks 
any of these down together and they're going to look well. They're going to go well together. Oh, the one the paint is in. Sorry. This is um, from, I got this years and years and years ago at a craft store. I have no idea which one. It was probably, I'm going to guess Michael's. Um, but I'm sure you could find it somewhere pretty, pretty easily. I'm going to do a little bit of my greenery just because I'm waiting on these other flowers to dry. So we're going to go in and do, and it's okay for some of the leaves to be lighter than other leaves. There's no right or wrong when it comes to art. So I'm just adding in my greenery. Can you guys see this okay? Hopefully it's not too bright. Like the lighting, I'm hoping that you're able to see, to, to see it okay. Hi, Mary Ellen in Montana. Okay, so I'm just continuing to pick up this re-inker and you can see here, I'm, I'm pulling it, I'm gonna show you up close. I'm pulling the reinker up the side. So I'm not dipping right into this really heavy pigment down at the bottom. I'm pulling it up to the side so it's a little bit diluted, tapping it off, and then painting with it. Now I could absolutely go full blast into that pigment and I actually will later. And that's when I'm gonna do some of my shading. And so you'll see that You'll see that a little bit later if you hang with me long enough. Okay, so I want this to be lighter down here. So I'm just still painting the greenery. Being careful not to go into the other colors because I will tell you that these re-inkers on this paper will reactivate. So what does that mean? That means that if I were to take this brush and get it wet and go back into this yellow, it's going to move that pigment around again. It'll lighten it and it will allow this color to blend into it. And I don't want that to happen. Not yet anyway, not till I'm ready. And one of the ways that you can tell if your brush needs some more water is it'll start doing what I call dragging, which means it's not moving across the paper as easily and it's pulling kind of like pulling the color and it will, oh, I'm trying to think of how to describe this. I don't know. It just looks, it looks like it's in distress. You can tell, you'll be able to tell. Okay, I'm almost done with my greenery. And then I can finish up my flowers because I'm wanting to give them an opportunity to dry so that bottom layer dries just a little bit. And then I want to take this and I'm going to get this nice and wet and I'm staying in the lines, but then I'm going to use that bloom technique again and let that bloom out. So you just get this very soft, very pretty watercolored effect. And I'm going to leave the tips of this one with a little bit of white because that'll help with some highlights. And then I'm going to do the same thing 
with this flower up here. Do I have any questions? Does anyone have any questions for me about this as I'm going? All the really exciting stuff is coming up here pretty quick that I want to show you. Okay, I'm almost done here. All right, so I have my base layer down for all of my flowers. Now it's time for the fun to start, my favorite part. It is a great brush. These brushes are amazing. Again, these are by the Silver Brush Company. They're called Black Velvet. You can get this as a size two. You can get them on Amazon. And um, this one is a size six. They're awesome brushes. And I love them. So they are a thirsty brush, which means if I get too much water on here, I can dry the brush off on my um, paper towel over here and I can stick it back into here and it will soak some of that water up, which is fantastic. I gotta have a swig of my coffee. Okay, so now we've done the fun, fun part. Um. Now we're going to do, or we've done the easy part, I should say. Now we're going to do the fun part, my favorite part. So I'm going to go in with Mango Melody. And again, I'm just going to pull some of it up on the edges here so that it's diluted. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to do my shading on this Daffodil Delight flower with the Mango Melody. Now you might be saying, well, where does the shading go? So what I have learned from watching many, many, many YouTube videos and taking a few classes is your shading needs to be wherever another petal would be laying over your petal. So um, for this flower, for example, you've got this petal here that's going to lay over this other one. And then you've got kind of these rough lines and I don't like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna then get my brush nice and wet with clean, clear water. And I'm gonna go in and just kind of dab along the edge of that harsh line. Now, somebody who's a true watercolor artist wouldn't have to do it this way, but I'm not. I am a novice and I do good to just get the shading in. So I want to see if you can see the difference there now in that flower. Ugh, the lighting is rough in here. So it just adds this beautiful shading. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to do the same thing with this one. So this area here would be shaded because it would be behind these petals and then these would be shaded under here because these petals are folded over. So it would be a little bit darker in that area. So you just kind of go around and you add color and shading wherever you see fit. And if you don't want to add the shading, don't. You certainly don't have to. Um, by no me by any means. I mean, you can. Uh, you can get a lot of really cool looks just from watercoloring and not even bothering with any of the shading whatsoever. But this is the fun part to me: is adding in all the detail. 
this is the part that I enjoy the most. Okay, so then again, I've got these really rough edges and I'm actually going to decide to pull these out just a little bit more because I'm gonna go in and add another layer of shading. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out just a little bit more and soften the edge. And at this point, I'm making it so that just my very tip of my flower petals are yellow. And I can tell I'm running out of water in my brush. So I'm going back in and adding in some of that water. So I'm, as I'm doing this, I'm actually thinking of my Aunt Nell. My Aunt Nell was my, um, or is, I don't know, when somebody's deceased, do you say what is or was or I don't know. Anyway, my grandpa's sister. And I'm very close still with my cousins, who are her granddaughters. And I love them dearly. And um, we spent a lot of time with them as kids. We would go up and visit in their... They lived in Washington. And so we would go up and visit and see them and some of my most fond memories as a child. So anyway, now we're all grown up and Aunt Nell has passed away, but Aunt Nell watercolored and oil paint. I mean, she just did everything. She was so talented with um, art. So whenever I'm doing something like this, I think of her and my grandpa could even, could even paint. My grandpa's still with us, but um, he also could paint. So I'm letting all that dry because I'm going to add another layer of shading. And I really don't like how stark white the edges of this flower are. So I'm getting some clean, clear water and I'm going to go along the edges here and just soften them and add in some pigment because it's bothering me. And this is why I say I couldn't be a true watercolorist because I'm not, I can't be free enough. I have to have too much control over the, the result, the end result. I have a lot of fam family members actually that paint. My aunt Annette, she paints which is my grandpa's daughter. And my cousin Adam, he paints. I don't know if he paints now, but he can paint. He's capable of it. Okay, so then same here. I'm gonna soften these edges and pull out some of this um, but I'm getting that clean, clear water so that I'm not adding pigment because I don't want it to get dark on the edges. I want the ends to stay light. Okay. This is the part that you're afraid of. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, this is watercolor paper. Don't be afraid. Just sit down and play with it. I mean, it's a great, like, relaxer. Like, I'm so chill right now. I'm having the best time just hanging out with you guys and painting. Okay. I'm sure that a true... A person with real watercoloring talent would be like cringing at my stuff, I'm sure. But whatever. Cringe away. Cringe away is what I say. 
So I want to darken the center of this, but I kind of went too much. So this is great. This is giving me an opportunity to show you how to fix it. So I'm just keep going in with clean, clear water. And as I do that, I'm picking this pigment back up. And I'm pulling it basically off with the clean, clear water. So it lightens it. And again, you do have to use, this is a higher grade watercolor paper. That's why it's not warping. And I've put down a lot of water on this and I'm not having any problems with it. And it is because it's, it's got that quality. I want to add a little bit of orange into the center of this flower. So I did that. And then I want to go back in. Here's where it gets scary. And I'm going to add some more shading, but now I'm using Melon Mambo. So this is where you're really going to see some of that dark. shading and I do have to be pretty careful to not now see it's bleeding into the other leaves that is because it's not dry yet so it's moving which is fine I'm not worried I'm not worried A lot of the times it looks worse before it looks better. So I'm just continuing here to add shading to the areas that I feel like need it. And I'm getting a little bit of bleed where it's bleeding into areas I don't want it. And that's just because I haven't waited long enough. So when that happens, it's a bummer because <laughs> there's nothing you can do about it. So now I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna soften some of these edges. And I'm just gonna let the bleeding happen because it's watercolor. So whatever happens, happens at this point. I can't, there's, it's kind of out of my control now if it starts moving and bleeding into to areas that I don't want it to. And so then you just kind of go, okay, well, it is what it is. But it will come together beautifully, I have no doubt. And like I said, if I wasn't doing this live, I would have left this. I would have left it sitting and I would have gone and done something else for a while and let this really dry well. And then I would have come back in and added my layers. And you wouldn't have you wouldn't have the bleeding into the areas that you don't want it to. I'm just going to soften and pull it around and soften and I just keep getting clean clear water and moving the edges of it so that it's not, I don't want these really harsh lines, that's what I'm trying to get rid of. And I want to preserve some of this really bright yellow because that's what, oh goodness, sorry you guys. Hopefully, hopefully that didn't just ruin my whole life. Can you guys still see? Am I frozen? It's raining in Sutter Creek. Yeah, you can dry it. Yeah, I am frozen. Gosh, darn it.
Can you guys tell me if it's frozen or not? I'm not seeing any comments come in. Let me know if it's frozen before I keep going. See, frozen, yep. Shoot, I don't know. Let me, let me see what I can do here. Um, I think if I disconnect, okay, I'm gonna go back to me. Can you guys see me now? My husband called and caused it to do this. Okay. Can can you guys see me or nothing at all? Gosh darn it. I always try to remember to put my phone on do not disturb. And I just forget sometimes. Yeah, okay, good. You see me. Okay, that's good. Now it's waiting to connect back to my phone. Waiting for connection from switcher. Okay, hopefully. Hopefully this is going to work. Can you guys see this, the painting again? I hope you see the painting. T message me in and tell me if you can see the painting. Okay, so for those of you just joining, um, we've just been watercoloring and doing and I'm just adding a few little details here and there and we've just been having a good old time here okay it's all fixed okay so now I'm just gonna go in for my last couple of things before we do our prize drawing and I'm gonna add I'm gonna add some shading to these leaves And I'm keeping it very simple. I'm basically just adding a dark line to the bottom of the leaves. Or the area that it's tucked under the flower. And you can see I'm staying away from the leaves around this flower because I just painted this flower and I don't want it to um, bleed into my leaves. That would be bad. Uh, go over here. Okay. Again, I'm going to have to rush this. And yes, you could use a heat tool. I personally think when you do use a heat tool though, it doesn't dry with the same look. But I could be wrong. I'm sure it's fine. But I think a natural dry just looks better. Personally. Okay, so now the next step is I'm going to go in with my bigger brush and I'm going to, I'm going to 
add some color to this little scallop here. So first I'm just doing it with plain clear water and then I'm just gonna drag in the Coastal Cabana. And this is really, this really makes this project kind of come to life. To add this blue because it's such a nice compliment and it's very striking and I'm just adding it here and there and then we're gonna go around the edges with water and I'm using a pretty significant amount of water here and I'm really trying to stay away from touching the stuff I've already painted. And then I'm going to dip and I'm just going to let it bloom. And then I'm going to kind of clean it and kind of move it a little bit. And it's going to be darker in some areas and lighter in some areas. And that's okay. I want that to happen actually. I'm just gonna very carefully go in and add a little bit of light color here and there. And again, we're going to bloom. And then I'm going to pull some of that ink around. And you can see how it really makes this whole painting come to life. Now, when I saw this stamp set in the celebration brochure as a free stamp set, I got really excited. And I thought, oh, this was the very first thing I thought of to do with it, what I'm doing right now. This is exactly what came to my head. But I thought to myself, people are going to be intimidated by this stamp, stamp set. They're not going to know how to use it, and they're going to be afraid of it. And so I just want to encourage you, and I'm even going to go in here a little bit and add some color. So I just want to encourage you, if you haven't gotten this one for free yet and you're wanting to try out watercoloring or coloring with Stampin' Blends or any kind of coloring, this is a great stamp set to start with because it is, um, it, it's got, let me pull this up here. It's got these big open spaces in these flowers. They're not, while it is detailed, it is not this teeny tiny stamp set that makes it hard to maneuver in. So this is a really awesome stamp, to, stamp set to start with for doing a project like this. So I hope you enjoyed this. And then we are, I'm just going to show you, this is like, this is how different they can look, right? Look at that. So on this one, I was able to reserve more of that light color on the edges, which I like a lot better. And I just really love how they turn out. Each one gets a little bit different and better. So I will, when this dries, I will trim it down and I will add the birthday sentiment right here at the top and then the happy, and these are both, this is from the Well Said stamp set. So I'll do happy birthday. Now this one is happy Easter, and I used the happy, and then I took um, this fine tip glue pen and I put it over the top of the word happy, I don't know if you can see, and it made it glossy. 
which is fun. And I'm out of Wink of Stella, otherwise I would have added Wink of Stella to these as well. Okay, so that is my watercoloring tips with reinkers for the day. Now the cool thing about this is I can just leave these reinkers in here and let them dry. And the moment I put a drop of water on them, it's just going to reactivate the color and I can use them again. So I don't even have to clean this out if I don't want to. It's kind of cool. Okay. And I only use two drops of reinker. That's amazing on each of those. So thank you, everybody. So we have giveaways. So let's do this one first. Drum roll. This one goes to Patty West. Patty West. Congrats, Patty West. I'm actually going to write your name right here. Patty, you need to message me and let me know your address. And then this one goes to Mary Ellen Ryan. Mary Ellen Ryan in Montana. I'm going to write your name right on here too. Mary Ellen Ryan. Okay. Also, I want to give you guys a heads up that tomorrow on my blog, I'm going to be having blog candy and giving away a bunch of shimmer paint. So if you want to, or shimmer paste, sorry. So if you want to get in on that, make sure you go to my blog tomorrow and my YouTube channel and comment. Now, for those of you that have been hanging around and you're irritated that I have not shared more drama from the story I told you yesterday on my YouTube channel, I'm going to finish the story part two and part three tomorrow and Friday on my YouTube channel. So you'll have to tune into YouTube to hear it. And I did have, this is really funny, I had somebody leave me a really nasty comment and tell me that because I told the story and left it on a cliffhanger, that it was bad business. She would never order from me. It was, she was not, oh, let me, let me bring you back to my face. It was not nice. She was so mad that I did not tell the entire story. And I just responded to her and said, you know, I appreciate your comment. I'm sorry that this irritated you, but I just ran out of time in the video. So if you got annoyed that I left you on a cliffhanger and you just can't wait, I'm just going to say, have some patience. Like the old days where we couldn't binge watch TV and we actually had to wait a whole week to see the next, next episode. I didn't do it on purpose. I'm not trying to be mean, I promise. But the story's long and so it has parts, you know, that's what it is. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, go to my YouTube channel. Um, just go to YouTube and search Wendy Cranford and you will see part one of my story there. And I made a cute fun card. A fun Easter card with the daisy punch and so you'll be able to check that out as well. All right Thank you all so much for tuning in today I hope you had a lovely time with me because I always have a lovely time with you until next time I hope that you create some love and craft some happiness and Enjoy your day. Talk to you soon. Bye